Today we're going to demystify whether fancy editing keyboards are worth it or not. So we've all seen the titles saying how to edit videos 30% faster, 10%, 80%. And do these things really work? You have so many cool options out there. Blackmagic just came out with a thousand dollar editing keyboard. You got Loop Deck who just made, well they have the Loop Deck Plus and then the Loop Deck CT or something. Uh, those look really cool. And then you have things like color panels which of course Tangent, Blackmagic have that can be anywhere from a couple hundred bucks to like 30 grand for the giant table. Now panels like those we're not really gonna be talking about today because a lot of times these get overlapped. I've seen a ton of videos on the Loop Deck which are really good. The product looks crazy cool. I wish Blackmagic would offer support for it. Um, and then I'd probably have one myself. While they are great to have knobs and dials for things like color correction, or if you're in Lightroom, you can assign, you know, to the exposure, the hue, things like that. They're great for, there's no denying that having a dedicated button for those specific features is going to improve the speed of your workflow. But when it comes to straight editing in the sense of cutting video, that's where a lot of times the overlap and the miscommunication starts to happen. Because then all of those videos, all I see in the comments is a giant debate of like, I don't need this, I just use macro keys and shortcuts on my keyboard and it's just as fast. And so as I'm filming this, I have no idea what the title of this video is going to be uh, because we are going to be comparing one of those uh, type of keyboards, it's actually a really cool one that you may probably not have heard of, versus a standard keyboard with just using shortcuts and things like that to purely cut something. We're not doing color grading or anything like that. I think this has improved my workflow and I think it's made me faster. If it hasn't made me a lot faster, it's at least just more comfortable and it's about the same and it's really just like a preference thing. But yeah, at the Timing of right now in the history of 8.06 p.m. on December 24th, Merry Christmas Eve to all those who celebrate. I have no idea which way this is going to go. So the test that I'm going to conduct here is I, from my last video about the 220 watt pixel light, I basically am taking the first 10 minutes of my uh, talking head A roll and I'm going to see how long it takes to edit. Now I know what you're already thinking. As soon as I edit the first time, I have an advantage, um, and I kinda already have an advantage because I already edited this video. I don't remember which seconds I cut where, uh, but I am going to have a slight advantage. So I'm going to start with the uh, fancy keyboard thing. So then the advantage should be to the traditional keyboard setup, and so if it's close, then I know it's pretty comparable, but if the keyboard is still a shorter amount of time it takes to edit, then I know that uh, it is significantly faster. But wait, I haven't even introduced what is in the corner. I'd be terrible, like, introducing a fight because, like, people would just come in the ring and I'd be like, I fight, and be like, you didn't know introductions, no nothing? Anyway, so, so in, in the, the right, right corner, corner, here I have a pretty traditional setup. We got a MX Master Gen 1 and then a uh, Apple keyboard. I was using like a gaming um, super clicky keyboard. Wow, I forgot the word mechanical for a second and I went with super clicky. And this may look intimidating, but it is simply a $5 little rubber cover. Uh, last year when I was going full stop into DaVinci Resolve away from Final Cut, I wanted to learn all the shortcuts and everything. And so this little keyboard here you can buy for any of the NLEs. They have one for Final Cut, Premiere, After Effects, pretty much every program. Uh, I will link it down in the description below. Like I said, this was like, I think five or six bucks. And in the left corner, we have the Deluxe T11. Now I scoured the internet for loop deck alternatives because again, I wanted something that worked in DaVinci Resolve and that was good for editing 
And of course, again, Black Magic makes one, but that thing is a thousand bucks. But I wanted something uh, a little bit more budget friendly. And after hours of scouring the internet, I settled on the T11, which sounds like a graphing calculator, but it's really not, I promise. So full disclosure, this is not a editing specific keyboard. So this is pretty much a standard keyboard. You got a space button, uh, you got an escape, tab, enter, delete, uh, and then it's got some custom buttons in the middle there. But what really differentiates this guy is the fact that it's got a little wheel here uh, which spins and so that was crucial to this whole thing. I couldn't just get a custom key thing. I know I could do macro keys on that uh, if I just had like a secondary keyboard. But I really wanted something that had a dial for scrolling through a timeline. So it has some pretty cool software here that's super easy and what's cool is you can actually set up uh, shortcuts for three totally different softwares. So right now um, I'm on M3 at the top here. We can see that it's meant to uh, be DaVinci Resolve, but like M1, for example, it comes with pre-shot. Yeah, it come with, it come with, it comes with presets. So I could set this up for Photoshop, and there are already keys, or I can go in and customize it. So that way I'm in DaVinci right now. Then I could hit M1, and now these are going to be shortcuts for Photoshop. M2 could be something else. We'll stick to M3 for now. So the software is stupid easy to use. Now the one downside to this is that the wheel isn't, um, you know, kind of like a scroll wheel on a really nice mouse where you can like move it slowly and it'll be really fine tuned, but then you can like whip it and, you know, scroll really fast. Um, I wish this were the case, but there's no sort of like I don't know, dampening or anything like this. So it's not like when you go slow, it's really like smooth. And then if you like whip it, it'll go all the way across the timeline. So when I'm editing with this, I usually have this and my hand's still on the mouse. So if I need to jump to like the middle of another clip really quick, um, cause obviously I have it set up to where I can go to back and forth the clips really quickly this way. Um, but if I want to go to like the middle, and then kind of fine adjust because the wheel is essentially set up to be the left and right arrow keys. So it's literally going to go frame by frame. In addition to that, the build quality just really blew me away as well. Uh, it's a braided USB type C cable. So it's a modern cable. This thing is full metal um, with, I forget what sort of mechanical keys, but it is very nice tactile mechanical keyboard. Uh, they're fully backlit. And yeah, and did I mention this thing was like 60 bucks? Okay, so again, really quickly, I'm going to use the Deluxe T11 to edit the first 10 minutes of my other video. Um, and then we're going to pause and I'm gonna do the same thing with the traditional keyboard and mouse. Um, even though, like I said, I normally jump between with the mouse for the Deluxe, I'm literally going to only use my left hand to edit the whole thing. Um, and then, yeah, we'll see which one is faster. Already I'm changing the rules on myself. Uh, I am going to allow myself to use the mouse for just moving the uh, playhead, not moving around any clips with it or anything. Um, Cause yeah, because left and right, that's just definitely gonna slow it down. And I want this to be real world. I don't want this to just be like, if you're using this, you're still gonna use a mouse. This is not a standalone product. Yell at me in the comments if you want to. All right. Reset. Let's go. Fifty-six, thirty-five, and that is going over it twice basically once as kind of a rough cut and then the second time I went through um, fine-tuning really trimming the edges because you know that good old YouTube jump cut sort of thing you really want to remove all breath as much as possible 
I definitely feel like I'm going to have a pretty strong advantage going in now that I've, you know, listened to the roll twice. Um, I kind of know what to take out, what to leave in. And so hopefully this one ends up being pretty much the same exact length as that one. Um, I know that's a little bit of a variable is making the exact same cuts in the same exact spots. Um, but yeah, I really think this is as close as we can get it. So let's go and do that one in a sec. And here we go. one is not the the second time uh, that is the total time so with the keyboard and mouse I was able to edit the same exact first 10 minutes of the raw footage that I did with the deluxe t11 at 17 minutes and one second so basically it took me three minutes longer to use the traditional keyboard and mouse compared to this and I did slip up a couple times because it has been a little while since uh, I haven't been using this. What are the conclusions to this? Well, in terms of a 10 minute clip, yes, three minutes is three minutes. But if you are doing this professionally, then you know that every second counts and those three minutes add up when you're not working with 10 minutes of raw footage, but hours and hours each and every single day. Uh, so for someone like me, a tool like this is incredibly useful still uh, because in addition to the time that I saved, uh, even though I can do a lot of the same shortcuts um, that I've created kind of custom ones as well, some of them take literally three keys to do and your hand needs to get awkward. You need to make sure you're hitting the right keys. And of course, after a while, your muscle memory is going to get it. So you hit it most of the time, but there were some times where I'd hit the wrong key and, you know, I'd delete the whole thing or go to another spot. And so it's not as accurate. It is always going to be better to hit one key rather than three or four. And so that's how I have this guy programmed is each one of these key hits um, is basically doing this. So basically I have set up five to do the same exact thing as shift, command, left bracket. And again, if you don't care for this dial wheel, then you can use a second keyboard, you can use macro keys, so yeah, I would love to hear what you guys thought about this test, whether or not you think it is real world enough. Like I said, I've seen so many videos comparing keyboards like this, and I personally haven't seen any of them actually test out. They kind of just seem to throw numbers out there of like, oh, edit 30% faster when it all comes down to what you are actually editing. And I haven't seen any of them actually work with just cutting straight footage, which is the thing that honestly takes the longest. Everyone loves to color grade and mess with dials and knobs. I don't think anyone's debating that that is a faster experience, a better experience. Um, and gets you better results, but not a lot of people are covering this. So I would love to hear your thoughts on this down below in the comments. While you're down there, you can check out the description where I'll have this linked, the keyboard cover, and you know, I'll even throw a link to the loop deck just so you can compare and contrast what you wanna do. And don't forget to hit that like button if you think I did a good job on this video and get subscribed so you don't miss any notifications as we head in to 2020. See you guys in the next one.